Okay, now I will resist some exercise. Okay, so we consider <coughs> AN a sequence of uh, subset of R, okay, which, uh, okay, such that it is an increasing, an increasing sequence, and we define A to be the union of this AN. Okay, now we want to prove that the outer measure of A is equal to the limit as A tend to plus infinity of M star of AN, okay? Okay. Mm. Okay, we already proved uh, this statement under the hypothesis that a n are measurable, okay? Okay, so we just start by removing uh, that hypothesis. Okay, so just observe that um, by the monotonicity, okay, just let me tell you this, by the monotonicity of the outer uh, measure, we know that the limit exists, okay? Okay, then we have this equality, this inequality, one side is trivial, uh, okay, it's trivial, again by, because A, of course, contain A N for any N. Okay, so now we, uh, we look the other side. Okay, so uh, the idea is uh, to prove what we, to use what we prove for A N, so to construct a suitable uh, sequence of measurable set that approximate this A N. Okay, so for instance, we, what we saw is that there exists <laughs> HN measurable, in particular a Borel set, if you want, uh, belonging to this class G delta. Uh, okay, such that you have that AN are contained in HN and the outer measure of the two coincide, okay? Okay, here I might remove the star, but let me keep it, okay? Okay, then we define HN, this VK, which will be the candidate to approximate AN in this way. Okay, this way. And this VK increase to V, which is the union of this VK, okay? Okay, for a theorem that we prove, we have that the limit of the measure of VK is equal to the measure of V. And now we observe some inclusion. So we have that, okay, we have that AK is contained in HK, and then we have that HK is contained in, no, excuse me, AK is contained in AK, plus one, which is contained in HK plus one. And then so you have that AK is contained in HN for any N larger or equal than K. And from this, you have that AK is contained in VK. So at the end, you end up with this chain of inclusion. You have AK is contained in VK and in HK. Okay, so what about the outer measure? So you can say that the outer measure of AK is less or equal than the measure, the measure of VK, less or equal than the measure of HK, 
which is equal to the outer measure of, of AK. Okay, so finally, what you, you, what you find Okay, so what you find is that the measure of VK is equal to the measure of A star K. So this limit exists, <laughs> and we have that the limit of M star AK is equal to the measure of V. And then since V is equal to the union of VK, which is contained in the union of AK, which is A. We have that the measure of V is larger or equal than this. And then you have that also the other, uh, the other inequality involving the limit is, uh, is achieved, okay? Uh, sorry, I'm star away. Okay. So basically, the fact is that you you have to use this now to because the outer measure coincide, but you cannot use them automatically because you need an increasing sequence. So you define this set VK in order to obtain this increasing sequence. Okay. Then uh, if you uh, if you uh, have to provide uh, a counterexample for which um, okay, uh, no. Then another this this is more concerned with giving a counterexample. Okay, you find a sequence the n of bounded subset, okay. of R, of course, uh, such that Bn contains Bn plus 1, and <coughs> M star of B <coughs> is less than the limit of, is strictly less, no, than the limit of Bn, where B is the intersection of such Bn. Okay. Okay, to solve this exercise, you have first to observe the fact that you have to provide a counterexample, okay? So you cannot look uh, for a counterexample in the class of measurable set, okay? Because we proved that for measurable set, this the quality also. So you have to look outside measurable set. And moreover, we are requiring that we want bounded, okay, subset. So even the counterexample that we give uh, during the lecture is not, is not a good one. Okay, so the idea is that if we have to look uh, outside the class of measurable set, we will use the, the non-measurable, the only example of non-measurable uh, set that we saw, okay? So here will be, <coughs> you can, for instance, so you need a decreasing sequence. So you can, you can, for instance, uh, consider T. So let T be uh, uh, the non-measurable non-measurable. Uh, set that, that we introduce using uh, the Zermelo axiom and so on, and consider you can define, uh, um, okay, the TI, you know, you remember the translation model one, 
and we can set Bn as, for instance, the union of Tk for k, which is larger than n, okay? Okay, if you can check that B, which is the intersection of this Bn, is the empty set, and what else? Then you can also prove that M star of Bn, okay, will be for sure larger than M star of T, okay? Which is, uh, which is positive because T is not measurable if, because if it is zero would, would imply that T is measurable, but we know that T is not measurable. So this is, so we have these two and so, and so we are done, okay? Because so we have that the outer measure of B is, uh, is zero and so, so okay. Uh, okay, and then the last, <coughs> the last exercise, okay, it was easy. here, this part. <coughs> okay, so well, we consider EN a sequence of this joint measurable set, so joint measurable set okay of R of course <laughs> and let A be any set so take a set belonging to the set of parts of R okay then we want to prove that the M star of A intersection the union uh, this time was the countable union, okay? Of EI is equal to what? Is equal to the sum of the inter A intersected EI. Okay. Yeah, outer, oh yeah, outer measure, thank you. Okay, we proved this uh, for finite union, no? and so we want to use this. Okay, one side is, uh, is, come, is easy, just come from uh, um, subadditivity, yeah? So you just have to, okay, let's prove, uh, just see that this fact that the intersection, this intersection at the end, if you do some observation, is equal to is equal to the union of the intersection, okay? Okay, then uh, you just uh, consider, uh, okay, by, by subadditivity, okay? Do this and then by subadditivity, you, we have this, uh, this side of the, of the equality. Okay, on the other hand, uh, for the other, for the other inequality, we use what we prove, and so you have that m star of uh, a intersected. Okay, this union is larger or equal than uh, the same intersection, but with. Uh, um, with finite union, no, sorry, with the finite union. Okay, and then here we use what we prove, so formal result. Uh, okay, so this is equal to the sum of this. Uh, yes, sum of the intersection of EI. 
and then we just uh, let n goes to infinity. So this that does not depend on n. So <clears throat> okay, this is just to to see this proof. Okay, now we go on with with the topic of last time. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay, last time I think we uh, we conclude the lesson with the lo with the losing theorem. Can I erase? So last time, yes, I was saying that we conclude the lesson with the losing theorem, which is a kind of uh, is a pro an approximation theorem, which tells you that uh, a measurable function is uh, equal to a continuous function everywhere outside a set uh, um, of small measure. Okay, so we add the theorem was the following. Okay, so let S, let so F measurable. Okay, uh, yeah, we start by um, so F defined in an interval, a measurable function, and then then okay, then for any delta positive. There exists a set uh, A. Okay, now, or maybe we can just say it like this for any delta, there exists a um, continuous function G such that the set of the X in I where f and g are different is less than delta, okay? Okay, uh, okay we prove the theorem, but I want uh, to warn you so about the fact that th this result uh, so doesn't mean that uh, um, the point where the two coincide are continuity point for f, okay? And I give you an example of this. Okay. Or rather, so kind of warning. I want to, I will write it just to stress this. So the losing theorem. does not imply that F is continuous outside a set a set of of measure uh, of a small measure okay So the fact is that the set where they do not coincide must be can be might be dense in I. Okay. So for instance, take for instance just to uh, consider f defined in this way to be the characteristic function of this set here. Okay. Yeah, uh, is R uh, is not no 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 yes, 
But no, 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 does not imply that f is continuous outside a set of small measure. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we assume that f is a measurable function, and we say that there is a continuous function, g, for which they coincide, but outside. Now I will show you an example. This is, I mean, you're. you're so think at this set, at this fun, at this function here, okay? It's a measurable function, okay? Because it is a characteristic function of uh, of a measurable set, okay? But of course, it's not continuous. No, okay. So for instance, you, you have that you can take as a continuous function g c zero i. And the set where they do not coincide is zero. Okay. Because okay, this is one. This is equal to one on the rational number, which have measure zero. The rational number in, in zero one. Okay. And this zero outside. Okay. So g, if you take g uh, identically equal to zero, which is of course continuous. So you have that the set x i where f of x is different, so the measure of uh, yeah, the measure of this set zero. It's really small. Okay. But you cannot say nothing about the continuity of f, okay? You're not convinced. <laughs> but it depends on the set uh, is depends in I. In I, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I take I, for instance, in this case, as, as zero one, okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now I want to, to summarize somehow what we did so far in just uh, three, three facts. Uh, probably in the book of Royden, they are uh, listed under the name of three Littlewood principles. Okay, so we saw this fact that for every every measurable set okay e with outer measure finite finite measure is almost is nearly if you want a finite union <laughs> Finite union of uh, of intervals. Okay, so basically, uh, you can express a measurable set by means of very very elementary set. And when I, I when I write this, I I have in mind uh, one of the points of the theorem of uh, characterization by approximation of measurable set. Okay, was probably the last uh, the last statement which tells you that the symmetric difference okay of a measurable set. And this final union is small. Okay. Okay, and then we saw yesterday, um, I don't remember, um, on Tuesday, the Egor of Severini theorem. So we'll tell you that pointwise convergence is uh, nearly the uniform convergence, okay? So this is the theorem of Egor of Severini. 
And this is theorem of characterization by approximation. And the third one is uh, indeed is losing theorem that a measurable function so a measurable function is nearly a continuous function in the sense that I just said, okay? It's nearly a continuous function. And this is the theorem of, of losing. OK, so we can somehow outline and summarize what we did so far with these three, uh, with these three results, OK? OK, now we are in position to introduce, uh, to start to introduce the, uh, the Lebesgue integral. And I would like first to, to recall you the, um, the construction of the Riemann integral, OK? Also to see somehow the shortcoming of the definition of the Riemann integral, and so the need to introduce uh, another, another, uh, another um, definition of integral. Okay. Okay. OK, so we consider f a function defined on, uh, on an interval. And we assume that it is bounded. OK, we know how, how it goes on. No? You take a subdivision, take a, a subdivision of a, b. Okay. B, so A equal to X naught, so the end point are equal to X naught, X1, Xn, Xn is B. And then we consider the supremum of F and the infimum of F under this, um, this interval, okay? So the supremum of F of X for X in between Xi minus 1 and Xi, and with small m, I denote the analogous, so the infimum of f of x over the same uh, um, interval, OK? OK, then uh, we define the upper sum and the lower sum. So define the upper sum with I denote with capital S as indeed the sum for I which goes from one to n of M I uh, times C I minus C I minus one and the lower sum s of x in analogy no? equal an m i c i minus c i minus 1. OK, we define um, the upper Riemann integral and the lower Riemann integral. So uh, in analogy, we have. This bar I denote the upper Riemann integral of f of x 
as the infimum of the, uh, of the upper sum over all the possible subdivision of AB Okay, this is um, upper Riemann integral. And in analogy, we define the, the lower Riemann integral, so you understand how it is defined, is the supremum this time of the small s over, again, all the possible subdivision of, of AB. So basically the definition of a Riemann integral is that when these two coincide we say that F is Riemann integrable and the Riemann integral is, is these values, okay? Okay. So in general general, we have that the upper Riemann integral is larger or equal than the lower Riemann integral, but when they coincide, coincide, F is Riemann integral. And, and uh, okay, the Riemann integral of, uh, of F is defined, this is the definition, as uh, one of the two decoy sides. So. Okay. Okay, uh, this is probably... Uh, the definition of Riemann integrals that you see in the high school. Or, but there is also, also another way to define this. You can also define, for instance, the upper Riemann integral has the infimum of the integral, the Riemann, which is, of course, it's, this is an elementary definition, over all the step function, function psi, such that uh, psi is larger than f, okay? Okay. And in analogy, you can define the lower Riemann integral as the, the supremum of the elementary integral of step function phi such that phi is less or equal than f. Now I will write. Supremum of a b f of x, uh, sorry, phi of x, phi over all the um, step function. Okay, phi uh, such that phi is less or equal than f. Okay, when we will, uh, we will define um, the Lebesgue integral, we rather follow this strategy, so somehow we will generalize uh, this, this way to define the integral, okay? 
But uh, we will see later, but I just want to anticipate. Instead of considering step function, we will consider simple function, okay? Okay, so now just to understand why the Riemann integral is not enough for, for our application, uh, we can observe that, uh, I mean, it's quite uh, um, intuitive that we want to, cons to give a notion of integral that leads you to the fact that the integral of the characteristic function of a measurable set coincide with the measure of the set, okay? So, we would like to, 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 to have something like this. This is the measure of the set, okay? So, give some notion of integral, okay? So, why Riemann integral is, is, not, is not good for, for this purpose? Because, again, we see this example, which is the same that we saw before. So consider this function, the characteristic function of the interval intersected with, again, uh, the rational number. No? So these are the characteristic function of uh, all the rational number in 0, 1. Okay, when we consider the sum, uh, the upper sum and the lower sum, <coughs> Okay, we, we begin by, by saying that, okay, it is measurable and the measure of this set is, is zero, okay? Okay, so what about the, uh, the upper and the lower Riemann integral of this, of this function? Okay, this is equal to zero and this is equal to one, so they are different. The fact is that Q is dense in, in zero, one, so when you take the supremo, you will always find point where Q is, is one, okay? And for the same reason, here you will always find point where, 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 uh, where Q is zero, okay? So basically we saw that they do not coincide, so this is not a good definition, okay? So a measurable function is not always uh, Riemann integral. <sighs> okay, so we, we want to extend this, uh, this notion and to consider the Lebesgue integral. Okay, we proceed by step by step. Okay, so first we will define the, the baggy integral for <coughs> for bounded function over a set E with the measure of E finite. So we will follow the strategy of Royden, okay? Then for non-negative function, and then we generalize to the general Lebesgue integral. Before I, I tell you that I told you that um, we want uh, uh, to, to define this uh, the Lebesgue integral, we want to use um, the simple function. Okay, so now we need to give to introduce what is called the, the canonical representation of a simple function. So take it as a definition. Okay, the uh, canonical. 
representation. Okay, representation of simple function phi is the following. You have that phi of x is equal to the sum a i key a i where okay this set here uh, okay let's assume that i goes from 1 to n is uh, is a collection of uh, of numbers which are non zero such that a i are different for, from zero for any i and uh, the set a i are um, are disjoint okay the set a i are the set where phi of x is equal to a i and a i are disjoint Okay, I have disjoint by definition, okay? So, this is to say that this implies that they are disjoint. Okay, so we want to, to define uh, the, the Lebesgue integral of this function, which is quite um, phi, if you want, with that consider, consider uh, phi, which is defined on, uh, on a set on a bounded set. Okay, then the Lebedic integral of phi, of course, would be the sum of AI measure of AI. Okay, where this small a and this mm, the set are the one of the canonical representation, okay? Okay, then there is a, mm, just a lemma which tells you that, okay, suppose that you, um, you want to express phi not in the canonical representation but in another representation for which the set involved in the characteristic function are still disjoint. So for instance, let phi, uh, assume that let phi is equal to a i key e i where e i intersection e j is disjoint for i different from j. For example, you can think uh, you have a one. You can think that you can split a one in two and call them e one and uh, d two, for instance. This, this is this is what what I mean, okay. Okay, suppose that e i of course are measurable. The measure of e i is finite, and then you have that the Lebesgue integral of phi must still be expressed um, as um, e i the measure of this. E i one to n. Okay, the proof is easy because you consider the set 
a a where f of x is equal to a to a sorry this is the union of a e i where i e is equal to i so basically it means that if you consider some repetition you can still define the, the Lebesgue integral in this way, okay? You have that A, the measure of AI, is equal to A, the measure of the union, is equal by additivity, because we're assuming that they are um, disjoint, uh, has uh, uh, AI, the measure of EI. And so when you consider, you sum up V of X, you have that this is the sum, this is, I use the definition with the canonical representation is equal to the measure of AI, and this is equal to the sum of AI measure. Okay. Okay, now we want to see that uh, the, the Lebesgue integral is, uh, is linear, okay? Raise here. A R. I mean A R. This is a definition. No? A R. Consider they said A R, which is the one in the canonical representation, are defined as the x such that f of x is equal to A. Then I express this in terms of the this disjoint set E I for such that A. AI must be equal to A, okay? So in principle, you can think that these are more than the, the set of the canonical representation, but they are still disjoint. So may, may I raise here? Okay, let phi and psi, simple function. Uh, which vanishes outside a set of um, finite measure. So vanishing outside set of finite measure or just think of them as defined on a set of finite measures is basically the same. Okay, then you have that the linear combination of a phi plus b. See, this is a the integral of a linear combination is the linear combination of the integral, okay? Okay, moreover, okay, what you have that if phi is less than psi, then the, the inequality is preserved by the integral. Okay. Okay. Okay, we will start by this. <clears throat> oh. 
so the idea to prove this and maybe also to prove um, other theorem concerning the the composition of two of two simple function is that you want uh, to to express um, both phi and psi as linear combination of characteristic function of the same class of set okay now I will, I will show you so consider phi is equal to the sum of a i key of uh, e i put them a i like this and c is equal to the sum of e i key of b i okay uh, i goes from 1 to n and i goes one from 1 to n. Now I consider all the possible intersection of the set in, in those two classes, okay? Of course, A, I are disjoint and B, I are pairs with disjoint. So consider all the possible intersection uh, of the type uh, A I intersected B J. Okay, if you want, I can change the index here if it's if you prefer. Okay, I will still find a finite collection of this joint set. Maybe the, it will be a finer collection. So I end up consider obtain obtain a finite collection uh, e, uh, e, e k of this joint set and now I want to represent phi and c with respect to this collection okay because this is uh, something in common between the two okay So we have that phi is equal to the sum of a k, uh, c e k, and uh, okay, k will go from one to some n, and c k, which goes again from one to the same n of b k of k e k. Okay. Okay. This is of course not in general the canonical representation, but we saw that. It doesn't matter, okay? We just proved that it's not, it's not, uh, we're not obliged to use uh, the canonical representation because the notion of, uh, of integral for simple function does not depend. The important thing is that you take, for the moment, that E k are disjoint, okay? Okay, so uh, consider the, the linear combination. Uh, so this is the sum, okay, which goes from 1 to n of a, a, k plus b, b, k, k of e, k. Okay, so just compute the integral. Okay, by definition, uh, okay, this is the sum, a, a, k plus B, B, K of the measure of this set E, K. Okay, here you just use, uh, okay, the, the linearity, so you just use the fact this is A, K, A, K, the measure of K plus B, K, B, K, the measure of E, K, and this is by definition is just a. This is the Lebesgue integral of uh, of the function phi plus b, the Beg integral of c. So the first part is proved. Uh, okay, now we have to prove the one concern. Can I inequality?
Okay. Okay, this is easy in the sense that, uh, okay, you have, uh, so we start by the positive the psi is, so trivially you have that psi minus phi is positive, and then when you compute psi minus phi, by definition of integral, uh, this is uh, non-negative, And for what we, by the step before, by the linearity, so by um, the step before, before, so concerning the linearity, uh, you have that psi is larger or equal than, than phi, okay? Okay, now we will see that uh, we, can, we can use also other representation of, uh, of simple function uh, to define the Lebesgue integral. So this is a very easy lemma. And we will use the, we to prove this, we will use uh, the linearity. So corollary, corollary, consider phi equal to the sum of E i key e i i from 1 to n. So and we, here we do not assume any hypothesis on the fact if e i are disjoint or not. Okay, just you can represent everything. Okay, then the Lebesgue integral has the same form, uh, the measure of e i. Okay, proof is simple, just uh, okay, just use this. So phi is equal to the sum of e i key e i. Okay, use the linearity that we prove. Okay, so co consider this as a particular simple function. No? Linearity, so you have that this is equal to e i, the integral of key e i. And, and this, this integral is the measure of. And here, to, to, here you use the definition, okay? Here you use the linearity and here you use the definition. Measure of e i. Okay. My rights here. Okay, now we, we want to uh, to define the Lebesgue integral for, for more general function. And as I told you, we want to use the same strategy, some, something analogous of what has been done for um, for the Riemann integral, okay. Okay, so consider start consider simple function, of course, and uh, and we know how define how to calculate this the the Lebesgue integral for this function and simple function, okay, phi and psi, <laughs> and then consider the number this quantity, so the infimum of, uh, of the integral, of the Lebesgue integral over E of psi, of a simple function of phi, such that psi is larger or equal than some function f, some measurable function f. 
and okay in analogy you consider the supremum of phi where phi this time is uh, less or equal than than phi okay then you have a characterization the following characterization is the following Uh, in all this definition, I always, I already told you, but just to stress that I, I consider the measure of E finite, okay? Okay, we have that. Let F defined on E, values on R, um, bounded measure of E finite. Okay, then you have the following characterization that this, if these two quantities coincide, then F, rather, the two quantities coincide if and only if F is measurable, okay? So the infimum of uh, Psi over all the possible Psi step function which are larger than F is equal to the supremum of Phi over all the possible uh, simple function phi which is less or equal than f if uh, if and only if f is measurable So assume, so we start by this implication, so we assume that F is measurable. Okay, since by hypothesis it is bounded, we have that there exists some M positive such that F is less or equal, is less than m, okay, or less or equal. Okay, then we define some set, ek, in this way, are the x such that f is in between two values, k minus 1. We already consider, actually, this, this kind of set f of x larger than k times m divided by n, okay? Where k goes from minus n to n. So e k are measurable and disjoint. Okay, this joint by definition and measurable because F is measurable, okay? Okay, moreover, we have that the union of this K, EK, uh, gives you uh, for K, which goes from uh, minus N, and then uh, gives you the, 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 the whole set E, okay? Okay, now, then, by additivity, we have that the measure of E is equal to the sum of uh, the, measure, the measure of this, uh, of this set E k. Okay. Okay, now we want to, um, thanks to this set, we want to define some somehow special simple function of the type psi and phi. Okay, psi n of x 
is equal to m divided by n okay okay and phi of x is equal to m divided by n and now instead of k i take k minus 1 so basically the end point of this hmm? No, the n n n minus n no no the index ah probably because i use uh, the index k is in between minus n and then it runs from minus n and then the k here because maybe i i use uh, is the same k uh because <laughs> Okay, K in, in capital, okay? Okay, so uh, they are, of course, um, like this. Mm. Okay, and then we consider pass to the integral. Okay, does do you have that uh, the infimum of psi larger than f over all the possible in simple functions? So this is the quantity in the statement of, of, uh, of the theorem. Is less or equal? Uh, sorry, no. Yes, no. It's true. Less or equal than C n. This C n here of e, which is equal to m over n. Um, sum k minus n to n of k in the measure of e k and in analogy you have the, the supremum <coughs> over the all possible simple function phi larger than f of f is larger or equal than the integral over e of phi n which is equal to Okay, then we consider the difference of these two. Here, um, so yeah, yes. Yes, thank you. So consider the difference of this and this. We want to, to see that the difference is zero, no? because we want to see that they coincide. So let zero is less or equal than the infimum of uh, e psi minus the supremum phi e. Then we use the inequal. Eh? P is uh, smaller than F. Uh, smaller, yeah, 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 sure, thank you. The C are always smaller and the C are always bigger, yes, sure. Okay, F, then we use uh, those inequality, okay, is equal to uh, M divided by uh, N less or equal. The sum of the measure of E k. Okay. Okay. We, here we use the fact that E has finite measure. So um, n, this is indeed the measure of E, which mm -hmm. is um, finite. 
and so as n tends to infinity, this goes to zero, okay? This goes to zero, and so we saw that uh, the, the inequality is, uh, is equal to zero, okay? Okay, now we have to prove the other implication. May I raise here? Yes. Okay. Okay, we assume that these two are equal and we want to prove that f is measurable. Okay, so again, okay, now we use the definition of infimum, as, um, the property of infimum and supremum, okay? Okay, so by, um, by definition, if, um, definition, of, uh, of soup and inf <coughs> okay there exists a simple function again phi n and psi n okay such that uh, we have always the same chain of inequality and <laughs> And we have that 0 is less or equal than psi n minus phi n uh, less or equal than 1 over n, okay? And call this fact dot. Okay, define phi bar on the top as the uh, supremum of those phi n and psi on the bottom has the infimum of those psi n. Okay, they, uh, we saw that these two functions are measurable because we proved this. And again, this, uh, uh, the chain of inequality is, uh, is still, uh, is still valid, valid, okay? Okay, now we introduce this set N as the set of X where Psi bar is strictly less than Phi, uh, sorry, Phi bar is strictly less than Psi bar. Okay, so why we need to, to see? No, so our aim now will be to prove that the measure of N is zero. No, if we see that the measure of n is zero, we are done because we see that uh, we see that, for instance, phi f does not coincide with the one of the two with, for instance, phi bar uh, only on a set of measure zero. Okay, so we, we saw that if a function coincides almost everywhere with a measurable function, then it is still measurable. Okay, so we want to to see that the measure of n. Is, is zero, okay? And okay, we automatically know that n is measurable because, because of the definition, because these two are measurable, okay? Okay. Okay, now we need a countable union to express n as the countable union. of the x such that phi uh, phi x is less than psi x minus 1 over k and call this set here and k and we define 
another set which is a slight variation of this nk and I will call them nk n where instead of this I use the instead of phi bar and psi bar I will use phi n and psi n so uh, this would be the set of x where phi uh, n of x is less than psi n of x minus 1 over k and we know, we, we see that um, nk is contained in nkn. Okay, now let me, uh, yeah, here, yeah, it's the upper, ah, no, uh, and I hope they, uh, maybe, yeah, no, 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 the up, I, I, I think I call them, to, uh, both of them with the upper sign, no? I mean, this phi bar was uh, the supremum of the phi n that, uh, no, that I defined, uh, I mean, I defined this f phi bar, okay? Uh, are you convinced or? Ah, okay, I, okay, now I know what you mean, okay. Um, no, okay, okay, I used two notations, sorry. Okay, so put, this is the same function. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. See, yes, I'm sorry. So take uh, now. Take x. Uh, yeah, yeah. What I wanted to do is to. Um, okay. This is because uh, it's trivial. But I, I need to do this. This is the set of the psi n of x. It's more convenient for me to express this set in this way. Okay, now let's consider this function. Okay, this is equal to 1 over k if, if x is in the set, if psi n of x minus phi n of x is larger than 1 over k, and this 0 otherwise, no? So if, on the contrary, psi n of x minus phi n of x is larger or less, less or equal than 1 over k. In any case, this is a positive cone. This is always positive. So, in any case, we have that that this 1 over k times k of n k n, in any case, We have that 1 over k of k and k n of x is less or equal than phi n of x minus phi n of x. Okay? Because if we are in this case, it is 0, a 0 is always is always less than something which is positive, okay? And if we are here, these values is 1 over k, and here are in, in, the, 
in the situation when 1 over k is less than this. Okay, so we always have this inequality, okay? Okay, now we want to pass uh, to the integral. So we have that uh, 1 over k of the integral k n k n is less or equal than the integral of this. Okay, we can use the linearity by n, which is by what I call uh, dot is less or equal than 1 over n. was one of the first inequality in, in the proof. Okay. So, as usual, we let the, this tends to this n tends to infinity. Okay, so we have that the measure of uh, um, n k n is less or equal than k over n for any n, and then uh, this measure is. Um, The measure of nk is less or equal than the measure of this m, sorry, of this nk n, which is less or equal okay, than k n over n, which is goes zero. So this measure is zero. Okay. So the measure of nk is zero, and think that now we are done because n, the set where um, where our function f was strictly in between uh, this uh, phi bar and psi bar, so the set n was defined as the union of this n k. So we have that the measure of n um, is zero. So basically, we have that f is equal to uh, phi, for instance, phi bar, almost everywhere, because it's always this, they, are, they coincide outside to a set n of, um, so for any x in, in e minus n, with n with measure zero. So we, we have that being this measurable, we have that also our f is is measurable. Okay, so we conclude the proof. So now it's clear how we will we will uh, define the Lebesgue integral for um, for measurable function no? as one of these two quantity. And okay, I think that for today we can stop here. <laughs>